Intarsia is a technique of color work that you use when you have big blocks of color. You don't want to strand the yarn all the way across um, as you would in stranded in your ferrule because it would bunch up, use a lot of extra yarn, not be nearly as clean as when you use one ball for each of these colors and, and twist them together. So the pattern I'll be demonstrating on is Zoom, which is a pattern from um, Barocco in Peruvia. It's a zebra striped bag. So first I cast on 15 stitches. I'm only going to show you the small corner of the graph and that's 15 stitches. I cast on with the light color because that's the first color that's going to, to happen here on row 1. There, now I'm ready to work. Take my sticky, mark off my first row so I can really see what I'm doing. I have six whites, six darks, and three whites. So let's start by just knitting. Because this is a right side row, the number's on the right, so it's a right side row. I know it looks like my cast on is backwards, so I'm just going to go ahead and knit. I could have used a knit on cast on that would have made it with the right side facing, but this will be fine. Two, three. Four, five, six. Drop that yarn. And I'm going to bring in another bobbin. It's the bobbin that I made with my business card. Wrap the yarn around it, slit the side. Can you see that? And put the yarn through the slit. Kind of holds it in place. You could use a whole ball of yarn for each of these blocks, but they can get very twisted, so sometimes bobbins help. You can also buy plastic bobbins, but I didn't seem to have any around. So, I'm going to find the end of the yarn. Here we go. And leave a few inches, four inches. Just start right in on my six darks. Knit. One, two, three, four, five, six. Later, um, actually, it will help now to do this. If I um, turn this over and not the tail I just made with the end of the white, I'm usually against knotting and knitting, but this is really going to help you on the next row. You, you can take that out later if you don't like how neat it is um, when you go to weave it in. So let's go back. I still have the three whites to do. I'm joining a new ball here of white. So let's unroll a little and then put that back in there. Join a new ball of white and do the last three. One, two, three. Again, I'm going to turn it over and not the end that I just put on against the end of the brown. So now when I hold this up, it looks like a mess, but it's not that bad. Um, got a couple ends going. Let's turn it over. This is the yarn we're starting with. Um, let's look at what happens on the next row. It's exactly like the row below, so that's great. Now, this is where it's important where the yarn is coming from. We lay what we just worked on over the top of this one, which we're about to use next. So make sure that the white one's laying over the top, and then start knitting. One, two, Three, four, five, six. Okay, make sure that yarn is, the back of the work is facing us so that we definitely want this yarn that we're switching on the back. And this is the yarn we're about to use. Make sure that one's laying over the top of it. And purl to the end. So we're starting to see what it's going to be like on the back of here. You can't quite because I have the 
the knots there. But let's do one more row and you'll see what's happening. Okay. Let's leave this. Okay, so now this time I can see I do one less white stitch than I did before. So that jogs the dark over. Um, or I can always count. Five white, six dark, four light. Whatever we want to look at it. Alright, so you can see I'm getting a little tangled up here. So <laughs> you just have to mess around with all these and straighten them out. I'm a little straighter now. Let's see. So we said five white. One, two, four, five. Now we lay the white that we're finishing with over the top of the one we're about to use. Again, keeping um, all the threads to the back, the wrong side of the work. It's not always the back of what you're working on, it's always the wrong side of the work. Pick this up, you can see really clearly there that the white's laying on top of it. And we have to do six stitches in it. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the same thing happens again when we switch back to white. And the brown over the top. Here's the one we're working with. Get that end out of the way so it's clearer for you. Right? Brown over the top. Pick up the one we're working with and work with it to the end of the row because that's what the chart says. Okay, I'm sort of pulling at the, um, the ends on the back there. It's um, looking good so far. Blocks of color. Turn it over, you start to see how there are nice blocks of color and you're getting a little ladder up here um, where the yarns overlap themselves. Should we do one more row? Let's see how long it takes. Move my sticky up. Okay, this is another nice row that's it's exactly like the row below. So I don't even have to count the chart. I can see it's exactly the same. So I'm just going to do every white stitch I make. White. Lay the white over the top and make sure this one comes there over the one I just laid down. Work dark with every dark. To get rid of the dark just lay it across there. Pull this up, see that? And do all light. Okay. Let's turn it over. You're starting to see the zebra. Um, so really that's it. You have to be patient and untangle your here are my knotted bobbins with my business card. Um, I have to untangle those every once in a while. But it's really pretty easy to do this. You just have to remember, especially um, what I showed you about where to lay the, the old yarn that you're getting rid of over the top and pulling the new one out from underneath. And you've got it. So um, good luck. <laughs>